I want to talk about my favorite airport, Pearson International. Oh, yours too? Well, if you've been listening to me the last couple of weeks, it's come up a couple of times. And, and I've said before, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, I don't care for Pearson for a lot of reasons. But today it might not be me. It might be you, particularly if you live in Etobicoke or uh, some of those areas to the south of the airport because they're going to change the way they use the runways. So this topic has come up, and you may wish to join in this conversation, and you know the numbers. So anyway, they, there's a growth plan that has been put forward by the Greater Toronto Airports Authority, or GTAA as they're known, and it doesn't suit the people of Etobicoke. Um, the airport's capacity has expanded radically, and you would know that. They've, they've built and built and built. They've built more runways. They've built different buildings, longer buildings, larger buildings. You know because if you take WestJet, you have to walk about a kilometer, as I did last week. Anyway, um, radically indeed, and, and it's got to handle even more flights and passengers as we go forward in time. And the figure 80 million, which is passengers per year is being tossed around for the period about 20 years from now. So you can see where we're going with this. It's not a long time. Residents of Etobicoke are quite unhappy about the redistribution of air traffic so that all runways will be used, I guess you could say, more rotationally. And I'm going to tell you what I say about it, but we're going to talk to the MP for the area. Uh, I say, what, you paid too much for uh, the house on Babby Point Road and you think you're owed a bigger break than Mississaugans or people living in North York? Runways work in both directions and typically... Pearson uh, use, uses, mm, let's call them westbound runways more often because of the prevailing winds here, and there are two of those in parallel. And when the wind shifts the other way, they use them east, but they also have two very long runways going north-south, and if they're going to start being rotational, they're going to be using those runways as well. So uh, we're joined now by Boris Zhezhnevsky, who is the MP for Etobicoke Center. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, sir. Good morning. All right. You've heard my little uh, preamble. I have. Why don't you react to what I've said and, and answer the question that I asked? And I'm not being nasty here. Is, is it people who are sitting out there on Babby Point Road who don't like the fact that they have to be like people in Mississauga? Well, we don't want to uh, pit communities against each other. And uh, airport noise is an issue, clearly, uh, with the communities that abut immediately abut the airport, uh, the, the altitude of planes as they come in is much lower, and the decibel levels are such, for instance, in Etobicoke, that if you're out on the street uh, in a place like uh, Markland Woods and a plane comes in overhead, you, can't, you can yell at the top of your lungs, but you won't be able to speak to the person next to you. Mm-hmm. And that's not only problematic during the daytime, uh, it's problematic through the night because they're expanding night flights as well. Are they going uh, so past one o'clock? They certainly are, and they've been pushing for additional growth. And uh, what we're looking at is a plan that calls for doubling the passenger traffic. So there's three parts to the business. There's the regional. Your, for instance, Toronto, Montreal corridors and uh, regional air traffic, which serves people uh, within the GTA. Then there's also, and also an international component, but the international component that they really want to expand into is to create an international hub for long-haul flights from Asia and the Middle East, which are the two highest growth areas. And they want to compete against uh, O'Hara, New York, etc., and create a major hub for people who aren't coming to Toronto, but are coming to North America, and they need to transfer onto another flight. If they're going to Houston, they would fly into Toronto and then fly on. And that's a major part of the business they're hoping to get. And then but there's also let me cargo. just Let me just stop you first there before you get into cargo. Uh, if we're going to be a hub like O'Hare in Chicago or like Kennedy in New York, um, it, it kind of makes sense to me in the sense that we are Toronto and we're becoming a very big factor. We're the fourth largest city in North America, no? Which then brings us back to where is the GTA located? It abuts some mature neighborhoods which have pre-existed the airport and most of the business that they have. And the reason that the north-south runways aren't prioritized runways 
was because it took that into account, and they were there, and the opportunity for, to use those runways during crosswinds. That's when they were supposed to be used. Because you had industrial areas along the east-west, and you had that 401 corridor. So it made sense. But now, because they're looking at all this growth, and when you look at their plan, and it was uh, we first saw it, and as an MP, this is the first time I actually saw it, was a week ago, the three terminals, they're planning to create a mega terminal that not just connects the three terminals, it actually envelops the three terminals, probably one of the biggest terminals on the planet. Okay, I want to stop you there, uh, Boris, because we have to take a break. But uh, you stay on the line because we're going to continue. You haven't talked to me about cargo, and Mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you a question about what the hell were we all thinking 30 years ago, maybe even more, when they bought the Pickering Lands. But hold the answer because we'll come back after the break. I am Peter Sherman. This is The Stafford Show on AM 640 Talk Radio Toronto. Major change. I I have to call it a major change for Pearson Airport. And we have the uh, MP for Etobicoke Centre with us online, Boris Zhezhnevsky. Uh And Boris, thanks for joining us. You and I are on opposite sides of this. I understand that you have to protect the people of your riding in Etobicoke Centre. My attitude is, if they want to turn Pearson into a major North American hub that includes not only the mainstream uh, short-haul traffic, like all those flights to and from Montreal and Ottawa, but also uh, a North American jumping-off point or jumping-on point, Uh, like O'Hare is and like Kennedy is and so forth, or LAX is on the other side of the continent, I think that's probably a good idea. And I think from a cargo perspective, given that uh, we've got 14 million people in Ontario and we're in easy reach of the U.S. border, that sounds logical too. So all of this makes sense, but I I do feel for the people who are in in the flight paths, particularly south of the airport, in your riding, because I lived in uh, Thornhill for a long time, and although not as close, we were mainstream flight path, and it was constant planes all day. It's a pain in the butt, but uh, that's where we have the airport, yes? Uh, it's more than just a, uh, a pain in the butt. Uh, and the closer you are to the airport, uh, the noise decibel level uh, doesn't increase uh, slightly. It it's uh, it affects people's not just quality of life but their health. But let's return to the issue of cargo. Uh, cargo. Uh, they're planning to double the cargo, which also means, uh, like the FedEx business that the GTA uh, took away from Hamilton Mountain Airport, comes in mostly through the night. So not only during the day, but through the night. And uh, uh, that becomes an even greater issue in terms of quality of life, people's health. And here we have an airport on Hamilton Mountain with basically farmland around it, uh, which can accommodate that cargo and serves this this high-density southern Ontario area. But the GTA wants that business for themselves. Now, we could resolve that cargo issue by saying, okay, let's designate airports like Hamilton Mountain Airport, which doesn't have the impact on human lives. It's and more rural. It, exactly. It's, it's almost completely rural, and it, it won't have that impact. Now, the other part is they are basically planning to, when you look at those plans, they are totally rebuilding the airport, this huge mega terminal one of the biggest in the world from appearances. Well, let's build that in a place where it doesn't impact on residential neighborhoods. Are you saying we should go back out uh, to the east? I I think there's an opportunity there. And, I've always uh, thought there was an opportunity but, there, but nobody ever had the will. This is now we're talking not uh, a couple of hundred million. We're talking about billions. Oh, but what they're talking about is tens of billions. Okay. Rebuilding. So if we're rebuilding uh, the whole airport, why shouldn't we have more than one airport serving Toronto? Are every you going to lead the charge? City, every major, uh, absolutely, because it makes sense. We Airports, by their nature, impact through their noise on local communities. And, uh, for instance, Frankfurt, uh, found themselves in a similar situation. They banned night flights. And Frankfurt continues to be uh, one of the uh, biggest, busiest airports in the world, but they've mitigated noise in ways that doesn't impact on their 
uh, communities, and everyone was saying, oh, it, it'll be a disaster for Germany and the economy. Well, you, know, and, and, you know what, Boris? We banned night flights for a lot of years as well, and, and now they've started up again, according to you, and, and that's fine. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to go back to the question I asked because I've got only one minute left with you. Okay. Um, and, and that is, are you prepared as an MP, of long standing, by the way, and a respected mm-hmm. one, yes. to get your, your fellow MPs lined up and bring this to a project, uh, bring this forward as a project, and by this I mean reactivating Pickering or finding another place or expanding Absolutely. Hamilton, whatever it happens to be. Absolutely. Our population will continue to grow. Uh, there are tremendous uh, business opportunities with airport growth, but it shouldn't be done in the middle of residential neighborhoods. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. All right. That was Boris Zhezhnevsky, who is the uh, MP for Etobicoke Center. He certainly doesn't want to see the expansion of Pearson Airport, and he certainly wants to see an end to uh, much more frequent flights over uh, his area, which is to the south of the airport. So 